in today's video we're going to be taking a little bit of a long range look this isn't necessarily a seasonal video it's mostly going to be trying to overview how the rest of april should go looking a little bit into early may perhaps just giving us an idea of the patterns that we've been in over the recent months and probably the pattern that we'll end up in so we're going to start out by looking at the past use that to our knowledge because typically these patterns are very long term and they can make comebacks and stuff and we get stuck in things like this so this is uh the past 90 days to uh the 10th when i'm recording this, this is a pre-made video for my vacation like a lot of them are going to be here uh, we see below average temperatures have really prevailed for the northwest into the like north central states a little bit here uh, as well and then we've had a warmer southeast and if we're really looking at it as a whole i mean it's been mostly warmer in the south colder here to the northwest and north central states compared to normal uh, but if we just back it up to march 1st the 90 days before march 1st really just the entire winter as a whole we saw mostly warmth in this southwest area and for a lot of it i'm not going to lie it was warmer in washington and oregon as well and we saw overall colder temperatures throughout the central and eastern states this is important because these are the two major patterns that we found ourselves in even as we've moved into march and april it's been one of one of these two overall patterns like the northwest north central being cold with warmer in the southeast region or warmer along the west and then cold basically throughout everywhere east of there and you might be thinking well yeah obviously there's just two patterns mostly warm in the west cold in the east or cold in the west warm in the east but uh, there is a lot more to it, and these are two very dominant patterns that we've seen recently. Uh, right now, as I speak and looking forward towards the next couple of days, it, is, it does look a lot more like this as far as what we're going to be stuck in. But the long-range guidance does suggest we might move into something a lot more similar to this, like uh, what we saw throughout uh, the past 90 days. So let's take a look first off at the European model. I want to give us an idea of uh, just some of the, the surface things that have been happening. We've seen these cold fronts come through, so we see this storm here bringing a little bit of a cold front with it, and this pulls the cold down, and really this is being aided by this warm surge out west, which we call a positive PNA. So you get this warm billowing and then trough in the east type pattern. And again, that's similar to what the winter looked like. Then we pretty quickly rebound into something that is different than the two. It's kind of like a hybrid. We see the warm in the west, but this trough is on its way right in between for a moment. Uh, we do get warmth moving up the east here for Monday the 14th. Um, so this could be a warm day sandwiched in between colder days. But this is more of a transition day. This isn't really like a pattern that we're going to see too much. Because really we end up back in the same thing. Warm in the west, cold in the east. We see it again here. A third kind of blast of that cold air into the east. And then... Finally, towards the end of the model run, as we approach like the 20th to the 25th, we do get this cold in the west, warm in the east dominated pattern. Uh, looking at the temperature anomalies, this is the overall look. So again, warm in the west, cold in the east is really, really dominant. Here's that brief moment where it's warm on both coasts with cold in between, but we end up with the cold in the east again, warm in the west. And that sticks that way until the very end where we end up in something a lot more like this after the 20th trough along the west coast, warm in the east. So is this going to be when the pattern changes? Uh, that is the, the question, really, uh, throughout this video. That is going to be the biggest question. Uh, so let's take a look at some longer range guidance. This is your European Ensemble model. Uh, and the good thing about this is this has about 20 members, and it takes the mean average of what every single one of those members uh, is thinking think of it as separate models 20 separate models that are very very similar just slightly different from each other um so we get the mean average of all of them looking at this we see cold in the east warm in the west obviously throughout all the time that the european model is also calling for that where things start to become clearer is as we move towards the 23rd 24th here look at this cold along the west warm in the east so this ensemble model is in perfect agreement of what we call a negative pna setting up which is cold in the west and this forces a lot of the warmth that would be over Mexico here, where this negative PNA is extending the cold all the way down there. It causes it to force up east of it, and it moves north into the United States, as you can see. Uh, we see this quite often. The GFS ensemble model, which is the same thing, just it's the GFS model family. Uh, it would be really critical if this one agreed because it's a totally different model. So if we get two different ensemble groups agreeing on the same thing, that's going to be detrimental. 
Looking at the 18th, we see warm in the west, cold in the east. But as we move towards the 25th, 26th, we do see the same thing. Cold along the west, warm in the east here. This could be a serious, serious indicator uh, that we could be moving into a warmer pattern around that 20th, 25th time frame. But again, I mentioned this in yesterday's video that was also pre-made, but these models have been showing something like this, maybe not with this much ensemble support, but at least the European model. Uh, it's been showing this warm-up happening, but then it keeps getting pushed back further and further and further. It has to happen eventually, and it might be this time. It has a lot of support, and I'm definitely hoping for warmth. Uh, this time of year, I'm definitely not a cold lover. I'm much more of a warm lover. In September, it's kind of when I shift gears, and I'm like, okay, let's, let's see the colder temperatures move in. But this time of year, I really am hoping for the warmth. I'm hopeful that we see this pattern change. Obviously, there's no guarantees in weather, though. Uh, we can look at the GFS extended model. So this one's going to take us even further. going to give us more insight. This is in seven-day increments. So this is the 16th to the 23rd, cold in the east, warm in the west. The 23rd to, to 30th is when it looks like we're transitioning. And then definitely, uh, interesting here, this extended ensemble model actually disagrees with the normal one. We see warmth still dominate in the west. And the cold, it looks like, is still moving into the east. So there is a little bit of hesitation. There is some disagreement that definitely needs to be noted. So keep that in mind as well, uh, that it's not every single model showing for this warm-up to move in. Looking at the European extended model, it's actually going to be very similar. Uh, right around the 21st through 28th time frame, it does look a little cold in the west, warm in the east. But look at where we end up. Uh, we end up seeing, as we move into May on this model... The warmth, at least putting up a fight out west, and this continues to bring the cold into the east. I am very hopeful that this cold pattern, cold dominated pattern, doesn't last into May. That would be a huge, huge bummer uh, for the er uh, late spring, early summer time frame. Uh, time will tell, of course. Here is the National Weather Service's three to four week outlook here. And this is going to be for April 19th through May 2nd. Keep in mind, this is outdated by six days. This came out on April 4th. But we see an overall positive PNA regime, warmer temperatures out west, and equal chances in the east. So you can imagine there'll probably be some cold spots in here. Uh, definitely a bum deal. Looking at the precipitation, though, dry along the west, which is interesting. Typically, it's cold and wet or warm and dry. We're seeing war, uh, war, warm and dry out here. Uh, really, really it's as simple as that uh, higher pressure warmth. It's all correlated. So we see the dry warm pattern really just take hold over the West coast. This doesn't from this look like it's changing anytime soon. The only saving grace here is that there's again, six days to go. And in this cooler area, we do see overall increase in storminess. So maybe more thunderstorm events in this pocket could be expected. With all that being said, be sure to subscribe. We upload every single day, even when I'm on vacation, you can hit the bell icon down below uh, to get notifications whenever we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.